both economic growth and the persistent illusion that there can be unlimited economic growth and corporate growth on a finite planet, I think is the key problem we have today. It's, it's the root cause of almost all the other problems. I've come to this conclusion. And uh, it is both uh, a question of perception and a question of values. So you have economists who uh, have grown up with this linear model of growth and who are professors in economic departments and write textbooks about it. And uh, if they rethink it, they would have to reorganize their whole professional lives. And it's also difficult for them to really shift from a linear thinking to a non-linear thinking. Now, if you are a, a corporate executive, then the problem often is not so much the lack of uh, awareness or perception, although it's also a problem in, in companies, but much more a problem of values. Because when, when you have uh, the task of reorganizing your company, uh, shifting from quantitative to qualitative growth and from a linear business to business cycles, the juxtaposition of two scenarios, either you make the same amount of money or even more in the next five years, or in 20 years you don't make any money because the company will be destroyed. Everything will be destroyed. So sustainability is the survival of everything, of including companies. So you have to decide long term versus short term. This is one of the main issues. So the wisdom is to look ahead. And this is what we need to do. So at the very core, it's an ethical problem. Do you work for your own good mainly? Or do you work also for the common good? The ethics is always working for the common good. My idea is to advocate a shift from quantitative to qualitative growth. When we look at nature, we see that not everything grows all the time. When you look at the forest, then you will see some plants and trees grow and others have stopped and others decline and they disintegrate and then the, the elements, the components, uh, become the resources for new growth. And it's the same with human cultures and, and human growth. So in uh, third world countries, growth is very often needed because people don't have the bare necessities. They don't have the bare food and shelter. They live below the poverty line. So by all means, they need economic growth. But the, the big companies that are polluting the world and destroying the biosphere don't need growth. They need to decline, they need to become smaller. The big banks don't need growth. They are too big, you know, they should be taken apart and, and divided into smaller, more manageable institutions. So growth is relative and we need to decide, we need to be able to uh, select and distinguish between good growth and bad growth. The bad growth should be limited, the good growth should be encouraged. What we can do, if we, if we can structure our taxes and subsidies okay. in such a way. So, uh, for instance, now the fossil fuel companies, which are among the richest companies in the world, they get massive subsidies, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars subsidies from governments. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is taxation. You see, if you tax raw materials, and if you tax energy, for example, if you tax carbon, then this is a natural incentive to switch to renewable energies because producing with fossil fuels will be too expensive and the profit margin shrinks. shrinks. So you can work with profit, but you, you set up constraints and environments in which it becomes profitable to make business in a sound, sustainable way.